Uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary, for uh, this opportunity. Um, I have a two-part question as well. Um, how concerned are you about freedom of uh, press in India and Pakistan, given that one is a close ally now and the other is not as much as it used to be? Um, and how would you, besides the initiative and um, uh, the couple of initiatives that you uh, mentioned and the Khashoggi ban especially, how would you compel these countries to promote um, freedom uh, of press rather than suppressing it, which has been going on lately um, a lot? Uh, and uh, just a little uh, bit part as well, um, that uh, there have been reports that Indian Pakistan have engaged in uh, um, back channel dipl dipl uh, talks to um, fix relations and especially talk about uh, the Kashmir issue as well. Uh, what do you say about that? And then we'll also take a question from Robert Delaney. Robert, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Price. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Secretary. Uh, so my question is just regarding uh, your predecessors uh, the measures that uh, he took against um, uh, members of the or staff of uh, mainland Chinese media outlets uh, operating in the U.S., uh, including um, designating them as uh, being a part of foreign government outposts, and also uh, reduce drastically reducing their uh, their visa times. So this, of course, had the result of uh, China retaliating by expelling a number of American journalists thereby kind of undercutting the ability of the American press corps to understand what's going on in China. Uh, just wanted to ask, is your, uh, like, understanding that, that most people know that the Chinese government exerts a lot of control over mainland Chinese media outlets already, uh, is there, do you see any change in this policy? Uh, mm -hmm. And then uh, further to that, um, in general with your uh, with your policy towards China, uh, aside from a very uh, a proactive effort to shore up relations uh, relations with allies, a lot of the uh, the measures in place from the previous administration remain in place. And I'm wondering going forward what we might see in say the next 100 days or more for for China policy. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Thanks very much. Um, so let me try and address uh, those very good and important questions. Look, with regard to um, uh, freedom of the press in, uh, in Pakistan, uh, we are concerned by significant restrictions on uh, media outlets, uh, on civil society uh, more broadly. Uh, and uh, these, are not, uh, these are not new concerns, but media and, uh, and content restrictions, as well as a lack of accountability for attacks uh, uh, disappearances uh, against journalists uh, clearly are uh, a threat to uh, the ability to exercise uh, the right to uh, freedom of expression and association uh, in Pakistan. We've documented some of this in our uh, country reports on um, on human rights uh, practices, uh, and uh, we see uh, media outlets, uh, journalists, their families. Uh, in Pakistan, often subject to threats, uh, harassment at the hands of security forces, uh, political parties, uh, militants, uh, other groups, uh, all of which you are you are well familiar with. So, beyond uh, beyond different laws that we have on the books, uh, beyond the Khashoggi uh, ban that uh, that we talked about, we of course regularly raise these issues and concerns in our conversations uh, and in our meetings with, um, with our counterparts uh, in Pakistan. And uh, we also make them, uh, make them public. We pu publicly noted our concern over the arrest of prominent uh, uh, media figures, for example, uh, for their work. Sometimes uh, the most effective thing we can do, um, over time at least, is to shine a light on practices that uh, we, we find objectionable and also um, have others. Uh, do the same uh, and uh, hopefully that has an impact but our open and, and honest engagement with uh, with pakistan enables us i think to have an ongoing uh, sustained dialogue on human rights issues more broadly um and and more specifically when it comes to press freedom uh, the rule of law uh religious freedom uh even as we uh, collaborate uh in a number of areas where we have very clear mutual interests so this is a um, uh, an ongoing challenge, an ongoing problem, but it's one that we'll continue to uh, uh, to engage in. Uh, 
And with regard to, uh, uh, to any talks, uh, I would I would invite you to ask. Uh, uh, I'm not uh, again. Not, I don't have any information on that. I invite you to address that to uh, officials in Pakistan or uh, uh, or in India. Um, on uh, on China, this is a this is a challenging question, uh, and it's something that you know uh, I saw and, and engaged on last time. Uh, I was in government. Yes, the former uh, administration designated uh, PRC state-owned uh, official media outlets operating in the United States as state-owned uh, 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 official media enterprises uh, as foreign missions. Uh, it's kind of hard to ignore the fact that uh, the Chinese government has effective operational and editorial control over these entities, uh, which are focused solely uh, on furthering uh, Beijing's uh, global propaganda and at times disinformation. Um, we took steps to ensure that the public knows exactly uh, who pays their salaries and that their editorial comments um, are views of the uh, uh, of the Chinese government and the uh, the Communist Party of China. And the interest there is in in just making sure we're promoting transparency not interfering with the media outlets and their ability to, uh, to, to report on topics that uh, they choose, no matter how critical they happen to be of the United States government or, or, or anything else. And we didn't ban uh, these uh, state controlled media outlets, which continue to operate here, but we wanted to make sure um, that there was transparency and that people had full knowledge um, that um, uh, what they were reading was being in effect uh, produced at the behest of the government in Beijing, not uh, not independent media. Uh, the, the real concern here is Beijing's use of propaganda uh, and disinformation overseas through state-owned media enterprises and platforms with the uh, purpose in part of interfering or, or uh, undermining uh, democracy while <laughs> restricting freedom of the press and speech in China. And it's very hard to um, say, you know, oh, they can have it both ways. Um, it's a serious concern for us. It's a serious concern for allies uh, and partners around the world. And we're trying to work together to define uh, an affirmative democratic vision for global information uh, and that information space to try to build resilience against threats to it and to expose malign activity wherever it is uh, coming from. Uh, you know better than I do that China maintains one of the least free information spaces uh, in the world. And I recognize that to your point, and it's a good one, when we take certain actions, even though it's apples and oranges, uh, we've seen Beijing take, um, uh, take actions in response that may well have the effect of even further limiting what is already incredibly restricted space. So it is something that uh, we understand and uh, and is a concern, um, but it's not sustainable uh, either to have a, a, a total lack of reciprocity in the way um, China conducts its approach to, uh, to media and freedom of expression and the way we and, uh, and countries around the world do. Um, them having the benefit of operating in a free and open media environment and denying that benefit to everyone else is really not a sustainable proposition either. And again, I want to emphasize this wasn't banning uh, Chinese outlets. It was simply making clear, um, you know, who in fact they are uh, beholden to. Uh, the second part of the question, just on, on differences with the, with the approach. We're very focused on, on, on looking forward, not looking back. But I would just say that as we're thinking about and working on how we engage China in what is both an incredibly complicated and inc incredibly consequential relationship, we, um, we're focused on the fact that there are different aspects to the relationship. Some of it's adversarial, some of it's competitive, some of it's cooperative. But the common denominator and this is what we've tried to, to move forward on, is that whether it's adversarial, whether it's competitive, whether it's cooperative, we have certain foundational interests in the way we engage China. 
One is the one you pointed to, which is strengthening, uh, reinvigorating our partnerships and, and alliances, because uh, when it comes to um, uh, conduct or actions that we find objectionable, uh, that same conduct is often found objectionable by many other countries, and they are similarly aggrieved. And when we are uh, approaching uh, a problem alone, uh, that's one thing. When we're approaching it with many other similarly situated countries, you tend to be more, uh, more effective. And so that's one aspect of um, our approach. A second aspect of our approach is leaning in, engaging in uh, multilateral organizations and institutions from which we had pulled back in recent years. Because when we pull back, uh, we've seen that Beijing tries to, to fill in. And we want to make sure that our voice, uh, our interests, our values uh, are being effectively represented in those organizations, which in many instances are the ones writing the rules and shaping the norms uh, that will actually um, shape the lives of people around the world for, um, for decades to come, including on the use of, uh, of technology. So that's the second aspect of what we're doing. Third aspect of what we're doing is we are standing up and speaking out for, uh, for our values. And uh, that's important too. Um, finally, we are um, doing something that I think is critically important, and that is making the right investments here at home in our people, uh, in our technology, in our infrastructure, because ultimately our ability to um, effectively advance our foreign policy, uh, our standing in the world is more than anything else dependent on uh, our, uh, our strength and vibrancy at, at home. And that's the, uh, that, that, that approach I think is going to um, uh, be uh, important in the way we, uh, we engage China. One last thing while we're on this, because I do think it's important. Our purpose is, is not to contain China or to hold China back, um, even if we could. Um, our purpose is, on the contrary, to stand up for the rules-based international order that we have invested in so heavily for decades, and that we believe has not only been a benefit to us, but to countries around the world, including China. Um, creating an environment in which it, it also could, uh, uh, could emerge. Uh, and when that order is challenged uh, by anyone, we will stand up and defend it. Not because we're against or trying to hold back uh, the country in question, but because we are determined to uphold the order and, and defend it. So that's an important uh, proposition. It's an important distinction that, uh, that sometimes gets lost.